Bat houses are a good idea for three reasons. First, bats eat tons of insects. One bat by itself eats 2,000 to 5,000 insects every single night. Another reason is you might like bats. So you might want to put up a bat house just so you could see bats. Bats fly out about 15 minutes after sunset and you can watch them fly around eating tons of insects. The third reason is you might have bats living in your attic. You might have them living behind your shutters. You might have them living underneath your siding. And bat houses give bats an alternative place to live. Bat house designs come in a variety of sizes and designs. One of the things that you want to keep in mind is that small spaces are important for bats. This is a tall, thin design, one single chamber, but the bats land here on the screen and go up inside to stay protected from predators. Those small spaces keep them protected from things like large birds, raccoons, or even cats. A concrete composite could also be made and actually incorporated into a house, your own house construction. The bats land here and go up inside, stay protected during the day while they sleep. Another great design that you might want to build is called a post design or a rocket box. And what this design does is it allows bats to enter from four different sides. And as the bats are inside the bat house, they can move around. It's a little bit more natural, similar to the loose and peeling bark of a dead tree. You'd put this on the top of a pole about 14 to 18 feet off the ground. What you don't want to do is you don't want to build or buy a bat house that looks a little bit like this. And the reason is, is that this is too open. Those large spaces allow bats to be eaten by predators, and moms would never raise their babies inside here. These houses, these smaller houses, are also a little bit too small for a maternity colony. The landing area is smooth, the bats couldn't land, and this small design is more like a birdhouse without a bottom. Don't make or buy one of these. We're going to build this bat house right here, and this is about as small of a bat house as I recommend. You want to make sure that it's got this landing area, small spaces, and we're going to build a bat house next. This is a simple single chamber bat house. They could be made three chamber, five chamber, or even 20 chambers if you want to build a really big one. Most people in their backyards probably only need a single chamber bat house. So what we're going to look at here today is this bat house is made out of both plywood and cedar, both great materials to build a bat house. This is a full sheet of plywood, exterior grade plywood that's going to be on the back. Now uh, I've already went ahead and stapled on the mesh that goes on here and this is what the bats hold on with their toenails. We're going to use cedar siding and it makes it a lot easier for the bat house to be put together. Now that's angled and including the front top piece is also angled so that the roof will be angled and when it rains the, the water will run off. Again we've got mesh put on the inside. You could also cut grooves or score the inside with a knife and that will also help to make holes or notches for the bats to hold on to. So that front is going to go right on here at the top. All right, you want to make sure you use good high quality screws and this is important because you don't want the bat house to warp and you don't want it to be too drafty as well. Baby bats need to be kept really warm and we need to make sure they're also kept dry as well. So we've got the screws set in. I've already pre-drilled the holes, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and set those screws in. We're making sure that it lines up so that the angles are all gonna be consistent. The next piece you're going to put on is the lower front portion. And the lower front portion also has a predator guard on the inside. This is about a three quarter inch piece of wood and that allows the bat house space at the opening to be much smaller. Only about three quarters of an inch. And that's really important for all the bats in North America to stay protected from predators. So this also will go right below here and we're going to leave a little bit of a gap about a quarter of an inch and that helps so that the bat house has a little bit of ventilation towards the bottom. It's going to be warmer towards the top and cooler towards the bottom. 
We're going to set the screws in the same way. Now that you have the front built, you have this, the mesh on the inside, and we're going to run a line of caulk on the inside to help keep the bats warm and dry. Now we've got it caulked up. And then we're going to lay that front piece flat down. And then we're also going to run a line of caulk on the back. Set your back piece with your mesh on the inside, down on top. We're going to set the screws into the back now, and this is going to keep the bat house nice and tight. Okay, if the caulk comes through a little bit, you can just wipe that up with a wet paper towel, takes it right off. Same thing on this side. This exterior latex caulk is going to really help uh, to seal up the bat house. The screws and the caulk together, along with uh, the cedar and the exterior grade plywood, this bat house is going to last 20 years. Now that you have the bat house put together, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put on the roof. The roof needs to be on a slant, and we've kept it all aligned so that we're ready to do that. But first, we need to put on some caulk. Then the roof goes on. Flip it over, we're going to attach the roof to the back. And we've got a finished bat house. What we've got done here is we have a bat house made out of cedar, exterior grade plywood, exterior screws. We've got a plastic that's gonna last for a long time. And we also have exterior latex caulk as well. So what we've made is a bat house that's gonna last 20 years. What you wanna do next is you can paint this bat house. You could also leave it this natural color. You could paint it the same color as your house. You could also put tiles on it or even shingles on it as well. You put this bat house about 15 feet off the ground, preferably on a pole or the side of a building. Now you're going to want to build this bat house at home and this is exactly the way that you do it. Let's go check out some successful bat houses. Bat houses work best if placed on a pole or the side of a building. They should be mounted about 15 feet off the ground, facing an open, sunny location. Bat houses can be painted the same color as the building. Use a non-toxic latex paint. You can check bat houses during the day with a strong flashlight. 
bats exit the bat house about 15 minutes after sunset. Hi, I'm Ben Affleck, and I want to talk to you about one of my favorite species of animals, the bat. We're at the Bat Zone at Cranbrook Institute of Science, headquarters of the Organization for Bat Conservation. We are in one of our enclosures, checking out some of the biggest bats and some of the smallest bats that are here at the Bat Zone. Bats keep the planet healthy. Bats eat millions of bugs every night. Because bats eat bugs, farmers can use less pesticide on their food. This really big bat right here is Tom, and Tom is a Malayan flying fox. It's the largest bat species in the entire world. The little bat is called an evening bat. One of the biggest problems in North America is that insect-eating bats are dying because of a fungus. And unfortunately, it grows on bats while they hibernate during the winter. Millions of bats are dying each year. So far, a disease called white nose syndrome has killed about six million bats in North America. Essentially, these bats are on the verge of completely dying out. Not only would we lose an extraordinary species, the death of our bats would be catastrophic to our ecosystem. There was just this little blurb in the news I saw about bats getting this thing called white nose fungus. I think that we all just take for granted that there's bats and bats are going to be fine. But then as we started doing the research, we actually found that the bats are in a dire straits actually as a movie that benefits from the bats. We thought we're going to build these bat habitats as a way to raise awareness and just generally let's learn about bats and know how they benefit us because they're really important. Bat houses give healthy bats a safe place to raise their babies and that gives bats a fighting chance to repopulate. Plus, putting up a bat house is a fun thing to do with kids. Hashtag save the bats. All right, let's go paint some houses. It's gonna be some very happy bats. A lot of people are scared of bats and they think bats are bad, but bats are incredibly beneficial and they are responsible for like a lot of our ecosystem working. I was definitely afraid of bats before and sort of had an idea that they were creepy, but really they have a lot of personality actually. They're quite charming. There's no reason to be afraid of bats. They don't attack people or get like stuck in your hair. The bats here in the United States only eat insects. They eat about twice their body size in insects every night. There's like that common myth that bats are blind, but they're actually not. They echolocate the little sonar, which I didn't know. I did learn that there's a, that they're the only flying mammal. Thought that was kind of cool. It sort of made me envious, given humanity's quest to fly. It's gonna kind of work. So a little cityscape going on here. Gotham skyline meets bat house. I think it, it's appropriate, you know? Also, um, bat moms prefer if bat babies take off their bat shoes before they come into the bat house. I just found that out too. And also, these are recycled from our set. So Superman and Batman fought within the walls of these bat houses. So maybe buy one, donate to the bats. It's important because all of these bats are dying right now. Bats all over the world are perishing from a lot of different reasons. But in North America, this white nose syndrome, this fungus that accidentally got here from Europe, is just causing massive die-offs of bats. If bats can raise babies that are healthy and they go into hibernation, they're going to be more likely to make it through the next winter. This is the kind of bat right here that we're going to save. This is called a big brown bat. This bat right here, hundreds of bats would be able to live in one bat house. This bat and other species have been dying to the extent that they're on the verge of extinction. But luckily you can do something to help. Savebats.org is a place to go to learn more about this and hopefully to contribute some effort toward preserving this important, valiant night of a species for now and years to come. Thank you.
My name is Lisa Perez. I work with the U.S. Forest Service, which is a department at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. My name is John Bradburn. I work for General Motors and I'm part of a sustainability team that believes in community outreach and today we're at the Michigan Bat Festival building bat houses. So the project uh, is part of National Public Lands Day and there are events like this happening all over the United States to help our public lands, our parks, national parks, national forests, fish and wildlife refuges. People are out pulling weeds and build, doing things like building bat houses for uh, creating habitat. Uh, today we're building bat houses, but they're special bat houses. They're made from Chevy Volt battery covers. The plant that generates the covers and makes those covers will um, generate as part of their daily processes some scraps sometimes. And when that happens, We'll take that material and we make bat houses. The bat houses are really essential to help bats survive uh, the white nose syndrome, which is a threat that's affecting them right now. We love working with kids and showed them how you can do these sort of things by repurposing and taking care of our earth and the wildlife that we share our earth with.